Hey, how's it going? I um, wanted to do a video on uh, a particular tool. Uh, this is the tool I'm going to review. It's a Fuji HVLP uh, Mini Mite 4 uh, HVLP sprayer. HVLP is high volume, low pressure. So this isn't the typical Wagner power sprayer. Um, this is a little more sophisticated system and we're going to talk about why you would use this versus just a little power sprayer. Uh, but before we get into the tool, let's talk about why I bought the tool because I think that kind of would help people out there a little bit. So I wanted to uh, paint kitchen cabinets, right? Seems like a pretty easy thing. Um, and for whatever reason, I was, I was determined to also build my own kitchen cabinets. Um, so this is the one cabinet door I built. And after I built it, I uh, wanted to paint it. Now, real quick on kitchen cabinets, this will help out a little bit in the video here. Um, the way this works, this is a shaker door, right? Named after the shaker people who do these types of doors. There are these things called the rails and styles. That's the pieces of wood around the side. They look like this. There's a groove on the inside of them. And then they have a tongue that allows them to interconnect and makes a nice, nice looking cabinet. This is the panel. The panel fits into that groove on all four sides, and that makes that look, that shaker look that people have. Um, but it's actually made out of five pieces of wood, four of these long rails and styles, and then this floating panel on the inside. Now, one thing to tell you, the panel is not glued on purpose. The panel is allowed to move. So one of the things we're gonna see in a video, or in a minute here, is if you paint that inner groove on a shaker door and the door moves at all, you're gonna start getting cracks and all kinds of ugly paint stuff that happens right there on that, on that joint. All right, so this is part of the door. This is some sections that I built first. And then I built this, voila. So the door was okay. Um, it wasn't the best. It's not exactly perfectly straight. It's not exactly perfectly square. Uh, the paint job is okay from a distance, right? Let me show you some of the issues. So I don't know if you can see that, but I have some drip marks here. And then when you flip it over, you can see, let me see a good spot. All right, let's see if you can see this. Inside here, it's starting to crack between the panel and the rail that I've got here. And the reason is I put a bunch of paint in there when I painted the first time. It also doesn't look great. Um, what I used to paint this was just old school oil paint. I went and bought some old school oil paint, I bought a brush, and I went to town. And it looks, I don't know, I don't know if it's accurate on camera, but when you saw it in person, or at least when my wife saw it, she said, oh, well, that's, that's nice, which is code word for that's not very nice. Um, so I wanted to make the doors look much better. It was also a nightmare painting with oil uh, you're constantly having to clean it. Everything has to be thinned to clean it up and it's gross. Um, so this is the old school way of painting it. All right. I'm going to show you the direction I went here. So reason finally overtook me and I bought an Ikea door to paint pre-made all the rails and styles are pre-made. Everything is put together. The panels in there looks great. This one's pretty nice. This one's actually uh, made out of ash, which is a really nice hard wood. That's what they make baseball bats out of. And so I wanted to paint this thing. And you also at home might be painting a door that already has paint on it. The same basic principles apply. Um, I needed to make this look beautifully white. So what I ended up doing here is this is the same door from Ikea, painted white and finished. And this one's actually been hanging for about a year. And one thing that you can notice right away, I'll try to show you this here, is I did not paint in those grooves this time. I, I, I left the paint out of there. So how do you, how do you get to this point? How do you use the tool? How do you get to this point? All right, I'm gonna put the other door back up so we can kind of look at it. So 
So the first thing I had to do is I sanded down the door, not a ton, but just to make sure everything was smooth and has a little bit of uh, a little bit of the finish removed. I only use like 200, 250, 220 grit, I think is what I used. That's a pretty fine grit. If you have existing paint, you're gonna have to work with what you have uh, to get it down to a finished point where you feel like you can paint it. You don't need to strip it back to just bare wood. You need to make it smooth and you need to make it so it will accept the paint. Then my secret weapon that I use, uh, and again, I bought all this stuff. I'm not, this is, you know, this is just stuff that I use. It's not something I'm promoting or something like that, is this stuff called Timbermate. Um, I bought this stuff at Woodcraft and this Timbermate is a paste. You can see it's kind of a chalky paste. And what I would do then is anywhere that I felt like there were bumps or too much grain showing, I'd rub this stuff in there. And as I rub it in there, it's smoothing out the surface and creating a nice, clean, smooth layer for me to start painting. All right, so I've sanded it down. I've got my wood filler mostly filled in. Obviously, I'm not filling in any of these big gaps between the rails and styles or between the panel and the rails and styles. I'm just smoothing everything out on the surfaces so it looks great. Now it's time to paint it. So this is where the HVLP system comes in. All right, so let me show you what this comprises of. So this is a little sustainer that I, I made myself. I didn't, it, do, it doesn't come like this. Um, it's a blue sustainer with a little white handle. And then this is actually from the Fuji Bike Company, but it looked good. So I ordered the logo on eBay. Let me take out the parts. First off, this part, as you can see, is spotless because I never use it. So this is actually used if you want to use a gravity system for spraying, but I don't use a gravity system. So I'll show you what I actually use. So this part that is highly painted is part of what's called the 3M PPS. And I believe it stands for pressure pot system. And that's what I actually use to put the paint in. And I'll show you how that works in a second here. This is the mini mic. This is what you're paying for. This is not a typical compressor. This is a turbine. So it's kind of like a vacuum cleaner in reverse. It's blowing out air and this is a four stage turbine. So it takes air through the filters, blows it out through this thing that's a pretty large garden sized hose. And that large volume of air travels through this big old hose, all right? And again, this looks no different than a garden hose, if you could see it. The only difference is on the end, I have something called a whip. Um, it's just a thinner hose that attaches to the end of what you get. And let me see if I can show you where it attaches. Well, I obviously can't. And then on the end of it is the quick disconnect that you connect and disconnect the gun with. All right, so I'll put this to the side here because that's not as interesting. And you can see how used this is. This is not like some tool that I've had that I've never used. I use this a lot. I use this anytime I have to do really fine quality painting. Then here's the gun. All right, this is the gun that we use. Um, there are different nozzle sizes based on the type of paint you're painting with. This is a 1.5, this is what I use all the time. There's a 1.8, and I even have, I think, a 1.3. This is the only one I ever use. Because <laughs> um, I'm always painting with the same paint, so this is the one that works for the paint, and I'll show you what paint I use. But this is the Fuji 1.5 system. That is this spray head, as well as inside here is gonna be a needle. And I'll show you how that works and we'll kind of break down the gun in a second here. But there's a needle in here 
that is the correct needle for that spray head unit. So the whole thing works as a combined system. And we'll take a look at it in a second here. Just put this on so I don't lose this across the room. All right, so it's pretty simple. This thing plugs into a wall, blows air through this uh, garden hose thingy, sprays it into here, sprays air out of the front. How do we get the paint involved? All right, what I use is this pressure pot system. So this is from 3M and it's actually used mostly for like automotive type painting, uh, but it works really well with this system too. One of the problems with a gun like this is when you're spray painting, if you go upside down to get something, if it's a gravity tube like this, this is gravity, it will not work upside down, okay? You need to always keep your gun with the paint flowing down into the hopper here at all times. That's a pain in the butt. <laughs> so what, what I've used is this system has a collapsible plastic liner. As you paint, air pressure is pushed into this liner and it squishes the paint down into the hopper and into the actual paint uh, for the sprayer. That allows you to paint in any direction and gives you a constant flow of paint at all times. That is incredibly helpful if you're ever gonna be painting uh, weird corners, like I've just painted a, uh, a large bookshelf that's built in. That would've been very difficult to paint all these weird angles, trying to keep the gun, you know, with gravity at the bottom at all times. So the way this system works is you buy a special little bucket that 3M sells. This is a, I believe a smaller liner. I'm not sure. I think this is the smaller. No, actually this is a medium liner. So if you were trying to get this on 3M's website, this is a 16325, 16325. I'll put that in the notes. And the liner fits down inside this little, this little plastic cup. At the bottom of the cup, there is a tube with a little air inlet. That is what's going to push air into this cup and squish the paint to where you want it to go. So that's what pressurizes the cup. It's not a lot of pressure, it's a tiny bit of pressure. Then this is the lid for this. One of the big advantages is this has a screen built into it. So you don't need to screen your paint. You can just put your paint in here, put this lid on, and then your paint is being screened as it comes out the inlet. One of the other cool little advantages, if for some reason you need to stop painting and store this, let me show you what you can do. You can actually put a little cap that comes in that kit. You push this down on top, and now the paint is kind of in a little, I don't know, it's almost like a blood bag. It's like ready to go. So you, you have this ready and you could theoretically put it back in and spray. I almost never do that. I used to I usually use all the paint pretty quickly, but that's what, what it works like. Now the last thing you need is the liner. If you know, there's two little grooves here, two little groove handles here. They fit over top of each other. And we put the liner on or the lid on. And when we screw it down nice and tight, that, that kind of makes this a completely contained system with just this little nozzle piece right here. It's got these little handles. This is an attachment you have to buy for the gun. That clicks together and let's see if I can do this on camera. There we go. Turn it and now it's now it's connected. So this is now clicked on here. It won't leak. Paint is going to travel down into here. Air is going to travel up in here. It's going to mix together. It's going to spray this beautiful pattern. You can adjust on the front how much air is being fed around on these two little inlets, and that adjusts the fan pattern. So you adjust that back and forth. On the back, you adjust the needle so that you have more or less travel, which adjusts how much paint. So this adjusts how quickly the paint's coming out. This adjusts the fan pattern for the paint. This type of gun has this little uh, feed hose that's a little bit of bleed air, a little uh, air that's coming 
from the gun that's pressurizing. You take the little nozzle, you stick it on here, and now that pressurizes this canister and squishes the paint down. So you get, when I paint, I'm probably using 97, 98% of the total amount of paint in the gun, all right? So it really doesn't have any wasted paint. The only bad thing is I, I usually just throw the liners away, so that, that's a little wasteful, but you can get a pack of, let's see, I got a pack of 25 liners, comes in a box, um, that's that 16325 from 3M, um, and, and that's it. So again, I, I like this size, I like this amount of paint, it's about, I don't know, maybe a quart and a half, I, I can't quite tell, but it's enough paint that it's pretty easy to spray for a good long time and not be constantly refilling it. I think there's a little one that's half the size, which you could do, but I kind of like this. I kind of like this size. That's a good amount of paint for me to have on the gun. The heavier the gun is, the harder it's going to be and the more tired it's going to be. All right, so that's the HVLP gun. That would just connect at the end of the whip, just like this. And that's it. So this valve opens and shuts it. If you ever need to clean off, so for example, I sand between coats. If you push this a little bit, but not all the way in, it's just an it's just spraying air. So that lets you kind of kind of get dust off your project. So psh, little squirt of air, and then you push down, and you get a heavy amount of uh, paint. Um, so that's the HVLP gun, the uh, HVLP compressor. I keep it like 30 feet away from the paint area. I do not want to suck paint into this compressor and destroy it. So you got to have a good long distance between the two. So since I have to turn it on and off all the time because I'm spraying and then I'm stopping, I just use this little remote start and you can see here how painted the one that's clipped onto my paint suit is and how clean the one is over by the outlet. So you just push this button, it turns on the compressor, push this button, turns off the compressor and that's it. Um, like I said, be very careful that you do not ingest paint into the into the actual uh, Fuji system because if you ingest paint on the inlet you might wipe this thing out and that will make you very sad. Also it's nice to have the hose pretty far because the temperature of the air coming out of the compressor is kind of hot, this turbine. Um, you really want to cool it off over the length of the hose, let it kind of like a radiator, let it cool down a little bit and that will make it uh, so you get cooler air at the sprayer. But this is not a high pressure sprayer like what you'd use in automotive finishing. Um, this is a low pressure. Um, it's also not a Wagner power sprayer. If you think it is, probably this video is not for you. Those just spit paint. They're electric, basically electric spitters. They spit the paint all over the place. This allows you to get a very fine, beautiful coat on your, on your cabinets or whatever you're painting. I painted bookshelves, I painted uh, built-in stuff. It's it's for high quality painting and it's about as nice a finish as you can get. It's nicer than what I can probably get out of the tool. So a couple other things. Cleaning kit. Now I know I know this gun, let me get it over here. I know it looks horrible, right? I, I, I'm sure someone's gonna make a comment of, man, that thing's dirty as heck. It is dirty on the outside, but on the pieces that matter, they're spotlessly clean. So there's a, there's a, I'll do a video eventually on how to take this apart and clean it. But when you buy it from the company, you can opt for a cleaning kit for free, I think still. And you're gonna wanna do that because you've gotta take this thing apart and clean the heck out of it if you're not gonna use it. So I clean it spotlessly. You can see this is the internals. Everything looks great on the parts I use. I've given up on trying to clean the outside. Um, there's just so much, <laughs> so much paint that builds up. It's a never ending battle and it's not necessary. What's, what's important is mechanically everything's clean, not aesthetically on the outside. Um, so that is what we have in the kit. I have another hose, which I've never needed. So let's talk a little bit about the paints that I use and a little bit about safety here. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. All right. 
So the two types of paint I use is I use this stuff, which you can't see very well, but it's called Styx Natural, I can't even read it anymore, but it's a Styx primer. Um, it's made by, I think, in six I N S X. Uh, let's see, Styx Waterborne Primer. Um, you, you'll be able to find it. And this is my primer that I use. I shake it up a bunch. Um, you want to use this. This is a viscosity uh, system. You pour your paint in here once you've mixed it up, and you see how long it takes to drip out in number of seconds and you can get your viscosity correct. You can't use this paint just the way it is on a sprayer. Based on the nozzle, there's a detailed explanation of what the viscosity should be inside the user manual. I'm kind of thinking I use about 35 seconds, but I can't remember what the viscosity is for this off the top of my head. But you want the viscosity to be thin enough that it sprays, but not so thin that you're diluting the paint past where the manufacturer wants you to dilute it, which kind of think is like 15% on this paint. So it's, it's a fine line of adding water. I use distilled water and I just kind of go back and forth until I get the viscosity just right. Then, and again, while I'm doing that, I'm using this timber mate and I'm constantly kind of filling in the gaps and making it, making it look great. You'll notice a lot more imperfections once you get your primer on. You'll, you'll get the primer on and you'll go, oh man, there's a big, you know, nick in the paint here I need to fix. And this looks all ugly right here. Let me sand this down a little bit. Once you get that on there, and I tend to do about six or seven coats, um, cause I'm trying to get a really smooth, clean finish. Then I'll use this Benjamin Moore Advance Waterborne Interior Alkalid. This is amazing paint. Um, this is really amazing paint. It's, it levels and does all the good stuff that you expect paint to do. But the way I've had this explained is this is an oil-based paint that is waterborne. <laughs> so let me, let me give you the explanation I got. And I, I'm not sure, I'm not a chemist, but if you think about like a vinaigrette that you use for a salad, you want to dissolve water and oil together. But water and oil cannot be directly dissolved. When you put the water uh, in, into your oil, um, it's just gonna separate. So what you use is something like vinegar, and the vinegar allows the oil to be dissolved into the water, right? So you, you mix the oil and the vinegar together, and that makes a material that can then be dissolved in water. It's the basically the same principles, the way I had it explained to me. This is an oil that's been modified to be soluble in water. So it gives you the benefits of an oil paint without having to have the cleanup and frankly, especially with a sprayer, the danger of spraying an oil-based, solvent-based paint. I would not spray that inside. I would use a water-based paint. I wouldn't even think about touching an oil-based or automotive or any kind of crazy paint like that. You need a professional booth if you're going to spray something like that because there's a huge risk of, of fire and explosion and stuff. All right, so this is what I use. Uh, Benjamin Moore Waterborne Acrylic uh, or Alkalid. We have had this on the cabinets for about a year in some areas, and it is amazing. You just wipe it down. It's very tough. No issues. Looks just as good as when we put it on. So that's the paints I use. And again, you have to thin both of these to get the correct amount of liquid. Um, finally, if you'll notice, everything I have that's in the booth with me is covered with dust and paint. Not my lungs. <laughs> so this is an old canister and you can see the amount of dust and particles that this thing screens out. I use a 60923 3M canister. Um, and most importantly, I use a full face respirator when I'm spraying. Um, you do not want to mess around with this because it is going to get in wherever it can. This is basically, I won't say like what the fire department guys have, but that, that concept, right? It's a complete 
you put your face in here and your whole face is protected. Not just the place where you're breathing, but your eyes and everything else. Um, one thing I would recommend highly if you do this, get the filters, the little plastic filters that go over top of here, because eventually this will get speckled with paint. And you can use this tear away filter, uh, get another one, stick it on there, and you will save yourself because the, the filters cost like $20 for a pack of five or $30 for a pack of five. This lens, which I had to replace once, it, the lens alone is like $75. So do yourself a favor, put the filters on there. Uh, the mask itself is like 150 or something like that. Um, and you know, given with everything going on with Corona, I don't know what the current price is, but the fair price is about 150. Um, but I use this when I'm spraying. I would never spray without this. Um, but that's the basics of what the HVLP system is. Now, I, I assume if you're still watching the video, um, that you probably, you know, probably want to get into this kind of thing. You can get a paintbrush and you can paint kitchen cabinets and it works just fine. You can get an oil-based paint if you want and you can paint it and throw away the brushes and save yourself a ton of money over doing this. This is more of a professional setup. But what I will say is I have never gotten results like you get with this kind of thing, uh, with this, with this uh, HVLP painting system. Um, the quality of the painting, the flawlessness, and the ease. I know it sounds kind of a pain in the butt with all these little things, but honestly, you just sand it down and put another coat down if you don't like what it looks like. And then you sand it down and put another coat down after that. Um, it's actually kind of helpful because it takes a lot of the pressure off. When you're painting with like an oil paint, you got to get that finish perfect. And if you get brush marks, well, they're stuck in there and you got to sand everything down and do all this work. You're never going to get brush marks with this. There's no brush to mark. Um, you're never going to get uneven coatings or anything. It, it sprays super smooth. If you, if you are in a rush, you can go heavy and you might get dripping, um, and possibly orange peel, but mostly just dripping would be the biggest issue if you're in a rush. Um, but you learn to just sort of dial it back, put down a couple coats or put down a coat, take a break, have a beer, come back, spray some more, take a break. Mostly the biggest work here is trying on, on the, on the wood to try to smooth out all the imperfections that you have in the wood. That takes uh, the majority of the work, and that's usually just a can of this and some a little sandpaper. That actually, that prep and this initial base primer is most of the work. The finish coats at the end, that's like the victory lap. It's just like all painting. It's the finish is the, the easy part, getting the base and getting it set up right. That's the hard part. So that's my uh, Fuji HVLP system. I'm gonna do a series of videos on actually painting a cabinet door. Um, I have painted, I don't know, maybe 30 doors and a couple cabinets. So I have some experience. I am just a rookie at it though. There are professional painters that do this all the time and they're experts, but this is what I've learned and uh, what I've invested in. And I'm, I'm really happy with this. I paid for everything myself. Um, really, I just want to share that with somebody who might be interested in HVLP spray painting their kitchen cabinets. Um, but it's not the only way. Good old brush and a can of paint will work. Uh, but this will definitely look smoother, nicer, and uh, more professional. All right. I hope that helps someone out there. Good luck.